Hey guys, this is a quick explainer video explaining the concept of linked lists. And I'm going to assume you have prior knowledge. You know what arrays and you know what a variable's memory and its value are. If you don't make sure to click this card above me, I know it looks like a major scam. I'll tell you to click this card and keep going down the list until you watch every code explained video. But now I promise it's just that one video. Once you're done with that, you can come back. If you already know the concept, then you're good to go. I'm going to be explaining linked lists by drawing a lot of parallels with arrays. So if you have a look at your screen right here, let's assume we've got a character array of length four. The value on top of each element is its memory location. So as we can see, arrays have contiguous memory locations. Since this is a character array, the next location is going to be one byte more than the previous location. This is the primary reason why we can directly access elements in the array. So let's say this array's name was ARR. Whenever we talk about ARR, whenever we write ARR in the computer, it just knows the first value of the array, 100. But when we say ARR of two or ARR of three, it knows that it's got to add two locations to this 100, or it has to add three locations to this 100 to get the value at that location. That's why we can directly access elements. That's the strength of arrays, but the weakness is like I said, it requires contiguous memory. Let's imagine you want to download a game of size 20 gigs. Your C drive has 10 GB and your D drive has 20, 10 GB. If only you could break the game down in the middle, put 10 GB in your C drive, 10 GB in your D drive, but you can't do that. So you're probably going to give up on downloading the game. Merging the free space together is going to be a really hectic process. Link lists solve this problem. Let's say you wanted a list of 200,000 elements but you don't have 200,000 bytes of free space. So you can't use arrays, but you do have 200,000 bytes in different, different pockets in different, different locations. In location one, you have one byte. In location 800, you have one byte. In location 10 million, you have one byte. And in location 3 billion, you have one more byte. Combining all of these, you're able to get 200,000 bytes of space. So if you have a look at your screen right here, this is how linked list looks. Now you're only going to have access to the very first element, much like the array, the computer only knows what the first element is. Each of these elements or nodes have two important sections. One section is the data, which stores the relevant information. And the other information shows you where the next location is. It's much like a treasure box. Let's say I was playing a game with you and I gave you a treasure chest, which had a few coins and a treasure map. That map leads you to the next treasure chest, which also has a few coins and another treasure map. You keep following the treasure maps until you find the very last treasure chest, which has a congratulatory note. Congrats, bro. You've got all the coins. We can see here 104 is the first treasure chest. That's the only one we have access to immediately. If we want to access, let's say the second element, it's not like arrays where we can simply say ARR of one. Because if we add one to 104, we'll get 105. But the next node may not be at location 105. So we've actually got to access the pointer section, which takes us to the next value. As we see here, the next value is 792. The pointer section then takes us to the next value, which is 6969. And finally, when we reach null, we know we've reached the end of our linked list. Now, another problem of linked lists is apparent here, and that's we don't know the length of the linked list until we go to the end. We've got to manually traverse and keep a count until we reach the very last element. Let's have a look at a quick sample program, which I'm coding out in C. Initially, we're going to define each node in the linked list. It's going to have a data section and it's going to have a next pointer pointing to the next element in the sequence. That's of type struct node star naturally because it's a pointer and its data type is the same as node. If we want to add an element, what we do is first declare a new node. Then we declare its data section as say n, n is the input. And its next section is going to be null because that's the last node in the series. We always add nodes to the end. If our linked list is empty, then we're going to say head equals new node. Head now points to the first element. If it's not empty, we've got to manually traverse through the list until we reach the very last node. And what you'll notice here is we're making a new pointer current instead of using head. 
Head is our very first element. We've got to be very careful if we're tampering with it. Because say we move head up to the second element, we've permanently lost our first element. That's why we have a current pointer, which we move up till we reach the last element. The moment we do, we put that last element into current arrow next. So say we add um, a couple of values. So let's say we add 10. We've got to say head equals to, since the return type is head, struct known stuff, head equals to, let's add a value of 100. And let's add a value of, let's say 30. Now let's display our element. Again, we make a current pointer equals head while it hasn't reached the end of the list. So current is not equal to null. We print the data value printf percent d current arrow data. And we move current up by one. Now we run this code. We can see how our linked list looks. Now say we've got to write code to delete an element, say the element at position two. We've got to manually traverse to the list until we reach the element just before position two and make that point to the element just after position two. So guys, that's a quick gist about linked lists and how they work. Leave your comments down below if you like this and want other explainer videos, or if you think I should have gone more in depth. Also, click the three buttons on your screens. You know what they are. It helps us out a lot if you do. It's been Vivek, and I'll see you all next time.